Hey guys, today I'm so excited to share what our curriculum picks are for first grade for Samuel. He is so excited. He is six. He just turned six in April, so he is just so incredibly excited. Like, subscribe, and turn on that notification bell. I have new videos on Fridays. Let's get started. Okay, so we use the Timberdoodle kit for our homeschool, and we basically just kind of add on where we see fit. We use Beautiful Feed books for our family subjects, and I'll go into that later, and then we also do Science Revolution as a family, and we watch Storybots and other science YouTube videos for science, <laughs> and that's sort of like a, you know, twice to three month kind of a thing, and then we just kind of pack it in on a Saturday. So with Timberdoodle, it comes with this awesome, wonderful planner, and I love it because it basically describes all the different works that come in the kit. It comes with like a, like sort of like template of how you can plan your weekly checklist depending on what kit you buy. And it comes with this awesome reading list that has all sorts of different subjects in there for you from the classics, fictions, historical figures, um, social studies, and just nature, life experiences. And so I love the big, huge list of books that they have on here for you. And also, it, the online scheduler comes with this um, kit and any kit that you buy, basically. And what's really great is you put in how many weeks of school you're going to be doing, what days of the week you're going to be doing, and then you can even add subjects on there. You can front load certain lessons, back load, or just have it spread out through the whole year. So we are doing 43 weeks of school. We start June 28th, and then we're going to be ending the first week of May. And the first week, or I'm sorry, the first week of school, yeah, the first week of school, the last week of June is sort of like a light introduction and so I basically start you know I do their week checklist but then I'm I'm not doing like everything if that makes sense I'm only like doing math and reading and spelling and then we introduce like the new different works that they have so with that online scheduler it basically print um, at the very front page it prints out like every single subject and like how many lessons for every single like you know year um, that come in that that curriculum and then the days that you're the days that you're gonna be doing them for then it goes into the weekly checklist and so this is just an example of this first week and I do not um, actually print out the week date I just do week one so I want to finish this week before I move on to the next so I tried this out last year where I had the dates printed and I just felt like, well, that week is done. We only got half of it done or, you know, we didn't do a couple things. Oh no, now we are, you know, behind a couple weeks. And I also don't put the um, actual, like, you know, you need to do pages five through seven. I just do like five pages instead of like the actual page number, I do the unit range. And so that really helps me with planning and sort of going with a flow because then it, it, it'll leave some of the stress of like, oh my goodness, we're behind. And you know, as you homeschool, you're like, you know, you want to be flexible. And so I like this way, you know, let's just do the five pages instead of like do pages 17 through 22 or whatever it is. So I really like that, you know, Timberdoodle has that option for you. Okay, so we are doing um, Evan and Moore Geography. We've done this for basically all of our kiddos. Um, we, as a family, did Beautiful Feet Books Geography and we really like that. Um, but this I kind of like because it's a little bit more <laughs> detailed in terms of just like, here's the definition, write it down. Do you see the picture? This is what it looks like. And so I like that this has a little bit more detail to what something is and so we're going to be working through this and then we also have a scrunch map and you guys this thing is so incredibly cool it literally can fit in his little pencil tray and it's the whole entire map of the world and so it is like indestructible you can lay it flat you know like on the carpet or the floor and then the kiddo can literally just scrunch it back up when they're done and that's always fun for a first grader. And then voila, and it's like a map on the go. So that goes with that. We also are gonna be going through what your first grader needs to know. And I really like this because of the fables and stories and poems that they have in there. And then the different songs. And we cut, we do this in the morning, um, just so like all the other kids can listen to, right? And it's just pretty fun to kind of go through that as well. And it has some history in here and I believe some geography and some math concepts as well. For handwriting, I have been doing cursive with Samuel this past year in kindergarten. And so we're gonna start this, the current cursive book that we're using, 
I don't really care for because I, I just don't feel like it has enough of like the examples and practice and I like that there is only like two lines where the kiddo is writing rather than the three. I feel like that might be a little better for him and it's like I just like how this one flows a little bit better and then I have not been doing a print um, penmanship for him and so I got the um, Chani's easy peasy alphabet and so we're gonna work through that so he'll do one page of each of these when during morning time when we're eating breakfast and listening to story time and going over our work um, I also got this for him just in case you know if he, he could choose between the books here and so I like this one as well we did this one for I believe for print in pre-k like the end of pre-k and he just whizzed through that and so I kind of want to slowly do these penmanship books so that he's constantly remembering like how to write properly and it's relaxing for him. <laughs> okay, so for spelling, we are doing spelling. You see right now he's finishing up spelling A. He should be done in about four or five weeks or so. So we'll start this probably the beginning of July once he's done with his spelling book A. And inside of this thing here, um, it comes with erasable color pencils and my kiddos I don't know, they don't really care for them, so we actually get the erasable highlighter from Sharpie or Mr. Pen or something like that. And I can link those down below. For writing, we are doing a daily six trait. And I really like daily six trait because the teacher manual basically of what to do is like at the beginning of the lesson. And then your pages are very easy and like, I just like how they introduce the concepts very gently and like, okay, let's just finish this for the day and then the next day we can do this. And my older kiddos, they actually do two to three or four pages at one time just because they like chunking it in that way. And in the beginning, I may sort of write things down for him to sort of take some barriers off of like, I want you to understand the concept before you start having to understand the concept, write it down, write it down properly and make sure punctuation is okay. And so I want to sort of introduce one step and process at a time for him in this book and I feel like I wish I would have done that with um, my previous first grader I think it would have flowed a little bit better because it is kind of a bit rigorous <laughs> at the end of it of like okay let's talk about the beginning and you know tell about how something happens and how would you write this and how would you you know this character do this differently and so I think I want him to grasp the idea before he actually starts writing it down. So that's what we're doing there. For art, we are gonna be doing a lot of journaling this year and especially with our family subjects, I really want to sort of kind of like take the afternoons to just like veg out, let's, you know, cause Beautiful Feet books, they use picture books for um, their, you know, teaching materials and texts. And so here's a picture book about George Washington Carver. Let's read it. Okay, now let's journal. You want to paint something, draw something. And so I just want it to be kind of like quiet and like laying on a Montessori work mat, doing my work kind of a thing and just, you know, having that like downtime, but still learning. And so that's why we school, you know, all year round basically for 43 ish weeks because I want to like front load the lessons and everything else in the morning and then we have afternoon work you know together as a family so I think that'd be kind of fun so okay so with his language art he is also doing explode the code I just really like how they teach blending and constant chunks and the works are simple and easy and it really helps to reinforce what he is learning in his all about reading and his spelling and we've gone through A, B, C, and the first book, and right now he's on the second one. And I pretty much stop around level six or seven, depending on like how well of a speller my kiddo is and if they're able to like sort of understand the rules. So Expel the Code, so great. I love it. I recommend it. For art, um, I like my kiddo to do art basically when I'm putting my kiddo Eden, my baby, to bed, and right? And so when she's sleeping is when I do the actual one-on-one -on -one lessons for him. And so I have these different art things for him. We have coloring with clay here. We have the foil art. And then for each kiddo, I got them one of these colored pencils so that they could just kind of grab it, go, and it can fit nicely in their bookcase rather than like a pencil tray. I felt like that took up too much real estate on my bookshelves. And so that's why we're doing this this year. So for reading, we use All About Reading and I don't have it with me. <laughs> right now because um, he's currently doing his reading. It's, you know, whatever we 
kids, school, all, all set, even when mommy's recording. And so all of that reading I absolutely love because they have the tiles, they have the, uh, the letter app for you, they teach it phonetically, they teach blending, they don't, they don't really do so many sight words and it really just helps with like, here is each letter, this is how I blend the word and sound it out and how they teach, you know, consonant chunks, how to decode a word and I really like how they teach the why and the how of how to pronounce a word. And that was something that was missing when I was younger and I feel like I'm learning all the wonderful tricks and tips on how to actually read through my kiddos curriculum. And all about reading is so amazing. He is on level two right now. He finished level um, one in kindergarten and then we started level two a couple weeks ago. And I, you guys, hands down, one of the best reading curriculums out there. My older kiddos are doing the level four and I, love it so much we're actually going to be doing all about spelling as a family because i want them to know the spelling rules as well okay to also go with art i have these two sketchbooks here because we are going to be doing like a nature journaling um and then we're also going to be doing you know historical figures and everything else with the beautiful feet books journaling and so i want them to have something that they can you know use watercolor on and sketch and color we're mostly going to be doing the coloring <laughs> and the pencils. So I do have the watercolor paper out there. And so, you know, I'm envisioning they would like watercolor paint something and then cut it out and then paste it in this journal and then write about it. And so I, for each of the kiddos, I, I have one of these five star books and I wanted a top spiral just so that you know, it didn't get in the way when they were painting or coloring or drawing on this thing and, and journaling. Okay, so my kiddo saw this on their website, on Timidal's website, and he really wanted to get this. And so this is just like another fun art project they can do on the weekend or something else. It's not really me sitting down to like, okay, this is what you do. This is something he can do on his own and something that he's been asking to do since we got it. I'm like, no, we need to wait, please to finish, finish your kindergarten work first. And so he's really excited about this as well. And I don't know, it's just, it has lots of different activities in there. Um, it has like the black scratch art paper and then it has the different, you know, foils and the stamps and the painting. And so this is just a fun box and he's really into dinosaurs. For his birthday, we went into this like Dino Alive exhibit and it was just absolutely wonderful. He loved it. Okay, so he also has this create your own planet and this is just a super fun way to sort of you know, there's a prompt, what colors are the bats on your planet and sort of create and draw and color and sort of, sort of a storyboard like your own planet. Like how cool is that? <laughs> and so my um, previous first grader just really loved this book and it's just fun as like a cool keepsake to just remember this is what you do when you're six years old in first grade. Okay, so for their like robotic STEM section of their kits, he is doing the, this is really loud the pets and he's actually already built every single one of them so i have this out in case he wants to do it and then my current fourth grader who's going into fifth grade has the two other boxes as well so i think i might just do like a robotics bin and here are all the pieces here are the workbooks because he's just he just really wants to build and so um this this one here the pets one has a little bit bigger pieces and it's kind of hard to get some of those pieces out so i do need to help him for those but putting things together grabbing the pieces um he's already sort of doing and so so i think that bin would just really kind of fit perfectly with how the school day flows for him okay and so with um our science we are doing science revolution we're also doing a history of science through beautiful feet books as a family and i also want to go through the five senses and this is something that we're just going to read through in the morning time and that's going to be with the whole entire like family like when we sit down for breakfast um and then once we're done then we're done with this book and then we're kind of move on to the next morning time book and it's part of our my morning time basket for the whole year and we're also doing the Berenstein Bears um, Book of Nature and Science, I believe it is, as a family during morning time as well. And so I just, some of these books that are part of the kits, you know, we can read as a whole family together during morning time and I kind of pick and choose. And then I do like a read aloud, our family devotion. We do a poem study and then like an art study or a composer study. And so I want our morning time to be about 35 to 45 minutes. You know, basically get your breakfast, get something to, to drink and then have a little 
little snack while you're doing your morning time. Um, for math, we do Matthew C. He started his first grade math, like I believe in January. And so he finished his pre-K, um, the red primer book. Um, I think like he started it in pre-K and then he finished it in kindergarten. And so he is on alpha. I love Matthew C because it's based on mastery. So basically like you have you know your math page here and then let's not move on until you've grasped this subject and i like it because it has a teacher's manual it also has a textbook for the kiddo to for you and your you know your kid to read and then it also has online videos as well and on the online digital pack they can you can also make new worksheets as well um, and new problems and so i really like that there are so many different things that you can use with this program and they have the actual math manipulatives which is you know i think a kid this young needs to be able to see and feel you know how many is 10, how many is 100, how many is 1,000. And so I really, really, really love this program. Okay, so with our STEM and math, we have a what's new, what's missing, what's different. And so this is just sort of like sequence patterns and everything else and also drawing and art because he has to color and like color in and draw in. Okay, well, draw what's missing and do this as well. And so this is like a really fun one that he can kind of do on his own and I can set him up with while I teach another person a lesson and then I really love the Evan and more um, stem books the beginning coding books we had we did it for um, pre-k and kindergarten and I just love it and my first grader has one as well and so we basically do this up until first grade because he's going to be in first grade <laughs> um, and then the second grade one I don't really I don't know it's basically the same things and once you know to put things in order you pretty much you know how to put things in order kind of a thing so for the thinking skills, we have critical and creative. And this one, this one was a little tricky for, <laughs> for my previous first grader. And um, this is definitely something that we would do together, you know, and all of this we are going to be doing together. But, you know, like making sure, okay, do you understand what is being asked of you? And like the coloring obviously can be done uh, on their own and they have like cool you know different themes in here and so I really like this book just as like an add-on and I don't necessarily think he's going to actually finish the entire book but it's just kind of nice to have this option for him in his kit I like the little illustrations and the questions and everything else and it gets us kind of talking about okay like what are the different ways to use water and what words rhyme with rain and we could even go deeper if we wanted to with this and so i i do like the um evan and more books here the bambino lux is also part of their thinking skills section in their in their kits and it basically are these books it comes with these books here and then you have these tiles and you have to put them in order and it i don't have the tiles with me um but you basically just like set up your board you move the pieces around you get it to match and this is really good for thinking critically and logic and sequencing is it's really great he had this in kindergarten i think for something else and and he liked it okay so the kit also comes with a test prep for grade one i don't typically start this until like november december or january um because i want to make sure my kiddo actually <laughs> has learned some things before i have tested them and so we try to start this later in the year so that um you know they're not like surprised by new sort of concepts and different kind of you know math things or whatever i really like using this because then it kind of helps me to gauge okay what do we need to work on still and are there things that he hasn't learned yet and what does he really really know and you know can we move on with something else and so i really like using a test prep okay so that is what i have for first grade hope you guys like the video and we will see you next time bye, -bye.